quick one before we start this. I'm not a professional audio anything. Uh, these are just some quick tips and tricks that I've learned over the past while. I want to share with you. Maybe show you something you've not seen before, or help you understand something that you didn't quite get beforehand. If you get any questions about anything that I mention, feel free to leave a comment. But let's take a look at what we've got. Welcome back to the channel folks. Today we're going to take a look at some audio tips and tricks for OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS and OBS Live. It's important to note that this works for all three pieces of software and I will be using OBS Studio today to demonstrate how they work and how to add them to your own stream. Today we'll be taking a look at four different tips or tricks and some you might have heard of before, some you might not have heard of before. They are noise gates, compressors, sidechain audio and per scene audio. It's important to note that when you add audio filters in OBS or Streamlabs OBS or OBS Live that the order you add them is actually important. In order to make this video simpler for you guys I have compiled my list in order of what you should do first and then following on from that. That will ensure that you get the most out of each filter and if you're following along with the video that everything will work the way it should do. First on the list we've got per scene audio. This means that you can have some scenes that have got microphone and desktop audio, some scenes that don't have desktop audio, or some scenes that don't have microphone audio. Second on the list we have a noise gate, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a gate that either stops noise getting through or lets noise come through. Third on the list we've got a compressor. This will bring up the volume of you when you're being quiet or when you're whispering, and it will bring down the volume of you when you're shouted and excited and hopefully it will make it easier for people listening to your stream and it won't give them a sore head or blow out their eardrums when you're shouting and getting all excited because you got an epic victory royale or something like that. Last on the list we'll talk about sidechain audio. This is where you've got your volume for your music here and when you speak and your volume goes up when you talk your music volume will come down a bit so that you can be heard clearly and then when you stop talking the music volume will go back up. It's essentially automatic volume level for music or for your desktop's audio or anything really. Time to stop rambling, let's get on the PC and have a look. The first thing on the list here is per scene audio. This is where you can have your desktop audio on one scene and your microphone audio on another. For instance, your BRB scene, you might want to have just music so that when you swap to that scene, your microphone automatically mutes itself and you don't get any noise from you rumbling around or if you drop something by mistake or if you want your music on one scene and not on another scene you can have that as well. In order to do that what you want to do is head on over to settings, go into the audio tab on the left and disable desktop audio and microphone audio. By default these two are enabled and it will add a desktop audio and a microphone audio to every scene. This is not what you want because every single scene that you go into will have these automatically. And by disabling them in the settings here, they will be gone. Personally, I use scene nesting in OBS, so I have a scene for my microphone and a scene for my desktop audio. You don't need to have this, you can just go into any scene and add a source. So I'm going to add my microphone source into my microphone scene. So I'll go the click, click the plus button, add an audio input because that's my microphone. You can see here by the symbol. We're going to call it microphone. And I'm going to select the appropriate microphone that I'm using. Yours might be different from mine. Mine's is this chat mic from my Go XLR. Yours might be your headset microphone or anything else. I'm going to hit OK and you will see in the audio mixer that we've got it now showing up. But when I swap over to my desktop, this will disappear and there will be no audio in my audio mixer for desktop. Just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus, go to audio output because that's your desktop audio. And we're going to call this desktop and we're going to select the appropriate desktop output. Mine's here is system for my Go XLR. And there we are, there's system audio on my system scene. 
However, you can just go into any scene here and add in anything. So if I go into my gameplay scene, I can go in here and add an input capture for my microphone or an output capture for my desktop. But personally, I would add my scene for my microphone, which I'll automatically adds in the audio track into the mixer. You can do the same with your desktop audio and you can hit the plus, go to scene and add in your desktop and then you would have a desktop audio as well. Just to show you guys how to do it without using scenes, I'm in my just chatting scene here and we have audio input. Mine's already exists because it's in this other scene but you can create a new one and call it microphone, select the appropriate microphone as I did before and add that in. And there you have it, that is per scene audio. So if I was to then swap to my BRB scene, my microphone disappears and is not active and nobody will hear me on my BRB scene. Second on the list is a noise gate. As previously mentioned, it allows sound through if it reaches a specific threshold and it will keep all other sounds blocked off and not able to pass through. This is particularly useful if you live on a noisy street or you've got noisy neighbours or noisy family that you don't want their audio to be picked up on stream. In order to add a noise gate, head in into your microphone source, go to filters, hit the little plus down in the bottom left and select noise gate from the drop down. I'm going to name mine noise gate funnily enough and this will open up a nice little settings menu for the noise gate. In this menu, you will have your close threshold, your open threshold, and then your attack, hold, and release times. Your close threshold is where the gate closes and doesn't allow noise through. Your open threshold is when your microphone passes by that volume. It will open the gate and it will allow the noise to pass through. Your attack time is how quickly the gate opens. Your hold time is how long the gate stays open for with no volume going through it and your release time is how quickly the gate closes. The best way I have of imagining this is like a gate to a field where your attack time is how quickly the gate opens, uh, the hold time is how long the gate stays open for and the release time is how long the gate takes to shut over. You can drag the bar here or manually enter a value before your thresholds. So you'll see down the bottom here, my microphone goes from minus 60 all the way to zero on the minus side. And my open threshold is at minus 26. So as long as my audio passes the minus 26 threshold, the gate will be open and audio will be passing through. If I drag this up to say my minus 10, which is around here, if I drag this up, you will see that my microphone doesn't work anymore and it will slowly close itself off because the gate is staying closed and the audio is not passing through the open threshold. So what you want to do is figure out how loud your microphone is just by doing similar to what I'm doing here by dragging it and seeing how loud you are when you speak and adjusting by that. If you have background noise you can adjust the background noise freely. Let's say it's really loud next to your microphone so you want to have the gate closer to your open threshold and this will mean that as soon as the volume drops below that open threshold it will close straight away. If there's just some humming in the background from say your PC or some things outside but there's no real great loud noises you can have this close threshold away down so that it just mutes off the sound coming from your PC. And that's all there is to it, that is you having added a noise gate. You can change these settings here. Um, I tend to find that the defaults are pretty much okay for having a noise gate. The important thing to note about this is that when you're speaking and when you're past the open threshold, it's as if there's no noise gate and any surrounding noise will go into your microphone and be able to be heard on stream. So if you've got a fan or like a horn blaring right at the same time you're speaking, people are going to be able to hear that because the gate is technically open. The third thing we've got to talk about is a compressor filter. This is what is used to stop your audio from being too loud or being too quiet and kind of maintaining a, a good baseline for your, the audio on your stream. 
essentially the compressor will reduce when you're shouting or being loud and raise the volume for when you're being quiet. This will result in you having an almost steady audio volume and it will be consistent throughout your stream for your microphone in particular. In order to add the compressor to your filter, you're going to head in the same way we did before and you're going to select your source for your audio. You're going to right click and go to filters and then down the bottom you can see here we've still got our noise gate on from earlier on. You're going to go to the plus and you're going to hit compressor. I'm going to leave mine named as compressor and hit ok. And you'll see again we have this properties window that we can change the values and settings for for this filter. Out of the six of these options we are currently going to ignore the bottom one which is the side chain slash ducking. Uh, we are going to talk about that one and our last point, right at the very top, we've got a ratio. This is how much your audio is compressed. So if we have a ratio of 1 to 1, that's deemed as not being compressed. If your audio is a 10 to 1 ratio, like the default here, then your audio is being compressed to a tenth of its original volume. The recommended compressor ratio for a kind of talking volume is a 3 to 1 ratio. So I'm going to slide mine down here until this reads 3. The threshold, this is similar to your noise gate where once you breach the threshold then it becomes active. So in this case when my voice reaches the minus 18 decibels which is roughly around here on our bar, when we've reached this then the compression will occur. The attack and release are similar to the noise gate as well. The attack is how quickly the compression activates and takes over and then the release is how slowly and smoothly the compression fades and you return to your normal volume. The output gain is how much gain you want on your compressed audio. Uh, I would recommend you leave this at zero as you don't want to add any post gain to your compressed audio. For me though, I would turn this up a bit to maybe minus 12 or minus 11. I'm going to set mine at minus 10.9 which means it's getting compressed when it enters this top section here into the red. My attack time is going to be 6 milliseconds. You want that to be nice and sharp so that when your volume breaches the threshold it's instantly getting compressed and it's not being too loud for people having to wait on the compression kicking in and release. I'm going to up the release a bit into maybe 150-ish. This would provide a nice slow a nice slow release into being uncompressed again and be back to your normal audio volume. And that's compressors. On the surface it's really difficult and really complex but to simplify it down it either reduces your volume or adds on to your volume so that you've got a steady and constant volume throughout your stream. And our final piece that we're going to talk about in today's video is the audio side chaining or ducking. And to do this we're going to do it in a very similar way to what we just did the compressor, except our sidechain is going to go on our desktop audio source as opposed to our microphone source. So we're going to head on over here to the desktop or whatever you've got your desktop audio source. We're going to right click, go to filters and then down the little plus and add compressor here as this is where the sidechaining is available. I'm going to rename this to be sidechain so that we know what it is and we don't just think that we're compressing our desktop audio. And here we are again with the similar window that we've just seen. This time, we are going to use this slightly differently as we're not looking to compress our desktop audio. We are just looking for it to automatically adjust the volume when our microphone is active. So the first things first, we're going to head into the drop down menu at the bottom and we're going to select our microphone audio input. Selecting this will ensure that when our microphone is active, OBS will pick that up and it will reduce the volume of the desktop audio to suit. Now what we can do is head back up to the top where we have the same five options that we've seen in the compressor values, except this time we're going to use them for reducing the volume of our desktop audio. For this one, when our threshold reaches a certain volume for our microphone audio, that is what we that's what we're thinking of here. So when my microphone volume reaches, say, let's put this to minus 20, then that's when the volume reduction will occur for our desktop audio source. We want a nice high attack speed so that the volume gets brought down. And this will be really sharp, so we can actually just increase this slightly. And then we want a slow release as the volume comes back. So we're going to bring this up to, let's say, 
the 400 sounds a bit good. Our output gain can stay at zero, and then for the ratio, this is kind of messing around to see what suits you. The ratio works the same way as the microphone compressor, whereas if it's one to one, it's not really being compressed, or if it's 10 to one, it is a tenth of the original audio volume. But what I'll do here, as we'll close this tab and I'll play some music and we can mess around with the ratio and you can see the difference in the audio volume. So what I'm going to do is swap into my gameplay tab where I've got both audio channels and here you can see when I'm talking my microphone level is going up and going down just like you would expect it to. The important thing to note is that my microphone audio is always going past this minus 20 decibel threshold which is the value we put into the desktop audio compression for the side chaining. That is the important thing to remember when doing this. So what we can do is play some music here and hopefully you'll see the audio compression happen real time in front of you. So we can see here that our volume levels are pretty high and when I speak that the automatic reduces itself and brings it down so that you can hear me clearer. What we can do is reduce the ratio and the threshold and this will reduce the volume of the desktop audio more. So what I'll do is I'll drag the, the threshold down. So I've dragged that all the way down and you can see here that the audio has went up a lot quieter. And if I wanted to change the ratio, I can change the ratio and it will shift as well. So it's now allowing it to go slightly higher, but is still remaining quieter for when I'm speaking. And just being quiet there for a second, you can see that the volume went all the way back up, but it was a nice slow fade into it being louder, which is where our release comes from. For this one in particular, I do recommend that you have a play around with it. Uh, it's quite finicky to get right and to get it suited to your volume and your streams volume so have a play about with it if you get any questions please don't be scared to comment i will try my best to get back to you and help you out if i can folks thanks for watching the video i do greatly appreciate it if you get any questions leave a comment below i will try my best to help you out or answer any questions you've got with anything i mentioned if you enjoyed the video hit subscribe hit like it does help small channels like mine grow and it would be greatly appreciated as well Feel free to check out my other videos. I'm currently doing around one a week. I am aiming to get them out on a Thursday. So hopefully there'll be a slow build up of content for you guys to see on the channel. But for now, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.